In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to integrate Cinema 4D and Adobe After Effects CS6. In the first part of the tutorial, I'll show you where to download the After Effects to Cinema 4D plugin. In the next part, we're going to use the 3D camera tracker on game footage. Then we're going to take that scene into Cinema 4D. And finally, in the very last part, we're going to bring the objects that we created in Cinema 4D back into After Effects CS6 for the final video. First, make sure you have this plugin installed. And if you need to download that, you can go to maxon.net. All right, the first thing we're going to do is import the video that you want to track. And in this example, I use an image sequence that was captured at 60 frames per second. So I click on interpret footage and make sure 60 frames per second is selected. Let's make a new composition and I'm going to name this one camera tracker and it's going to be 1920 by 1280 at 60 frames per second. Uh, throughout this tutorial, we're going to stay consistent with 60 frames per second. Now go up to animation and select track camera. And After Effects immediately starts to analyze the background. Here under the advanced tab, I choose a typical solve method and I select detailed analysis and it'll take a little longer. For this example, my idea is to place some text in the doorway. As I walk from right to left, I want the text to appear over the doorway. So what I'm going to do is select a few points over the doorway. And you can see the target looks like it's in the correct orientation. I right click on this point and I create null and camera. All right, so the first null point has been created along with the camera and I want to name this null point. Let's make a few other null points. You're going to see when we take this into Cinema 4D, these null points are going to be visible. Uh, make null points throughout the scene so you get a good sense of location when you take this into Cinema 4D. Alright, so let's make some more null points and you can make even more than that. Make some that are close, some that are far, and so on so you get a really good sense of where things are in 3D. Alright, so now we're going to bring this into Cinema 4D. Go to File, Export, and select Cinema 4D Exporter. I'll give that a name and save it. In Cinema 4D, if you press F2, you can view the scene from the top, and if you drag the timeline around, you can see the camera moving. Alright, this looks like a good track. We need to make sure the document properties specify 60 frames per second. You can go to Edit, Project Settings, and you can see FPS says 60 frames per second. Alright, this is really important that we stay at 60 frames per second throughout. Let's create a background. So go to Objects, Scene, Background. All right, now we've created a background. Let's create a new material for that background. Uh, in materials, go to file, new material, double click on that material, and you can unselect specular, leave color selected, and click on the texture. And we're gonna select this image sequence, the same image sequence that we tracked, uh, we're going to use as the texture. So click on that icon of the texture, that's gonna bring you, click on animation, you can click calculate. Make sure that this says 60 frames per second. This is important. All right, that we remain at 60 frames per second throughout. All right, so now take a look at the scene by uh, moving the timeline left and right. Everything looks correct. All right, under the render settings, well, just to be consistent, let's make sure we have the right settings here as well. So we're gonna go 920 by 1080 at, at 60 frames per second. If we go on the camera tracking menu, we created a doorway null object. Click on that object and just pan back and forth, uh, left and right, and make sure that that object is tracked correctly with the background. All right, if it is great, you did everything correct. If it's not, make sure that the interpretation and frames per second is correct throughout. Let's add a text object, go up to MoGraph and add MoText. And what I want to do is place this text at the doorway null object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the position of the doorway null object and I'm going to paste it into the text position. So edit the text. Um, you can see here under the object settings, I can change the depth, change the height, uh, the spacing and, and the letters of the text and so on. Now for the purpose of this example, we want to add some kind of texture to the text. So let's load some other materials. Here I, I load uh, built-in material chrome, metal chrome, and just drag that to the text. And I want to add a light. Alright, light's going to create some cool shadows on the text. Uh, you can rotate the orientation of the text, uh, make it tilt up towards the light a little bit. 
add some shadows to the light itself. Select the light, uh, click on shadow, and I'm adding soft shadow here. I'm gonna edit the texture a little bit. All right, I'm using a different texture. Uh, this one has a golden color. This one probably matches the scene a little better. You can use whatever texture you want. There's tons of texture packs, free downloadable texture packs out there. Just search for them and you'll find a much cooler texture than this. So here, um, what I did was I copied the text and pasted it and moved it down a little bit. Let's see what the final thing looks like. Maybe rotate the axis a little bit. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just playing with it a little bit, trying to fine tune the orientation. Let's take a look at the render settings. Go to the render settings. Here I select HDTV, 1920 by 1080. Uh, make sure it has it's at 60 frames per second. I'm gonna tell it where to save this file. So select the output directory. This is gonna be a test export. And for this example, I'm gonna choose a JPEG. But if you're making some serious graphics, I recommend using OpenEXR as your image sequence format. First, let's take a look at anti-aliasing. I choose geometry and animation. This is gonna create a fast render. All right, if you want better quality, you should choose best one by one and two by two. Now I go to effect and add ambient occlusion. So for this, the minimum is 10, the maximum 64. Those are things that are gonna make a better quality render, uh, but they're still optional. This is gonna add a lot of time to your render. Be cautious with these settings. All right, I'm also gonna add global illumination. Under the general tab, I select IR plus QMC, camera animation, and under irradiance cache, I select some lower settings. Uh, I don't want to go overkill or else it'll take forever to render. Those are things that are gonna make a better quality render, uh, but they're still optional. Under the output, make sure that you select the correct frame range. All right, if you wanna export the whole thing, uh, you can select the whole frame range, or if you want to export a very specific range, uh, specify that here. I'm rendering to the picture viewer so I can actually watch it as it renders. Okay, so you're gonna actually render uh, the text and the background all together into an image sequence. And then you can import that image sequence into Adobe After Effects and uh, apply additional color grading, sharpening, and etc. in Adobe After Effects. So that's the easy method. What I noticed is that the background texture comes out a little bit blurry sometimes. A more advanced method, and a better method in my opinion, is just to export the text and not the background texture, and then turn the background off before you render. And the way to do that is click on the background layer and click those little buttons there so they're both red. All right, now you just see the text. So go to the render settings, and now we're gonna save this as OpenEXR with an alpha channel. Use those options there. All right, render this out in EXR format. In After Effects, uh, import the EXR footage and make sure you select interpret footage, choose 60 frames per second because that's the frames per second that we exported the image sequence in, and drag this EXR over the original background image sequence that we started with, that we originally tracked. Uh, your EXR file should be floating right over the background. So from the perspective of the viewer, like the character that's, uh, you know, walking right to left, viewing this floating text over the doorway. Uh, kind of looks like they're walking, so we can add a camera wiggle. Go to the Effects and Presets tab, type in Wiggle, and the, an easy way to do this is to use Wiggle Position and Wiggle Rotation. There's other ways to do this, of course, with Functions or Wiggle Rama, but this way is pretty straightforward for the purpose of this tutorial. So the Wiggle Speed, here I type in 1.5 and Wiggle Amount 20, and for the Wiggle Rotation, I choose 1 and 4 degrees. This might be a little bit much, so you can tone this down a little bit. So there's a few ways to deal with um, you're seen wiggling out of frame. You know, you don't want to see the black boundaries. Uh, one way to solve that is to make the frame larger. So press S on your keyboard for scale. And in this example, I put 108%. That zooms in just enough so that the wiggle doesn't take you out of the frame. Uh, that's the first part of this tutorial. In the next part of this tutorial, um, I'll show you how I finish the scene. And hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can use these two programs together to make a badass intro. If you like this video and you like the channel, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Good luck and have fun.